nation of Israel. And this goes all the way back uh, to Genesis. If you go to Genesis uh, 10 and 5, when the Lord was talking uh, uh, to Noah uh, about his generation, in 10 and 5, he talked about, uh, he used that word I, uh, letting them know that, that, that God's people have been set apart from the rest of the world. And in the, during the uh, dispensation of the Old Testament, then we know that uh, God had his chosen people, which was the nation of Israel. And anyone else that was not part of the nation of Israel, they fell under the head of being a Gentile. So this is what he's talking about, our, 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 uh, those that were separated from the nation of Israel. And, and look what he's saying at this point. This is this took uh, uh, this writing was done about 695 BC, and we find out that God was still speaking to the Gentile nation. Uh, Isaiah is prophesied that this is going to be a future event, and he said, "The Lord had called me from the womb, from the bowels of my mother." And he made mention of my name. And uh, can we get someone to, let's find out who he's talking about here. Uh, when he's talking about someone being called from the bowels of that mother and his name being mentioned. Let's go to Matthew chapter 1, verse 20 through 21 and find out who is the writer talking about here. This portrait you have. Yes. Verse 20 and 21. Yeah, Matthew 1, 20 and 21. Verse 20. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thy son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. So this is who he's talking about here. When uh, the angel told Joseph about that which was in Mary's womb was of the Holy Ghost. And not only did he tell him to accept that, and he also told him, when we're talking about mentioned by name, Mary and Joseph was not given the opportunity to name his child. The angel told them that his name would be Jesus, God saved. Yeah. So this is who Isaiah is talking about. He's talking about Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. who he was mentioned by name before he was even born into this world. He's not speaking of himself. He's speaking of Jesus Christ. And he, and he goes on and said, and he had made my mouth like a sharp sword. In the shadow of his hand had he hid me and made me a polished shaft. In his quiver had he hid me. Again, uh, we find these words, he's still talking about Jesus. What, what does it mean here? He has made my mouth like a sharp sword. In other words, we got to find out Jesus' reason for coming down here. Sin. Sin. It was growing out of Green Bay tree. So when he's talking about a short sword, sword is a weapon that they use to go to battle with. Jesus was coming down here to go to battle with Satan and sin. Yeah. And the Lord had had him to sharpen up his soul. Mm -hmm. Because he's coming down here to go to battle. And he said that it was mouth that was going to be like a sharp soul. This is what the word is telling us about Jesus' mouth. It's not just, uh, excuse me. The Apostle Paul was telling us, when we join up with the church, 
We sing that song. I am on the battlefield mm -hmm. for my Lord. And I promise him that I, that I will serve him until I die. Because we know what we are saying. We're on the battlefield. Mm -hmm. We're on the battlefield against Satan mm -hmm. and sin mm -hmm. and all his demons. So this is what he talked about. God had prepared his son to come down here. That's what he was saying. His sword was sharp. He didn't come down here by no surprise to take Satan on. And he knew what he was getting into when he came down here. And he said, uh, he had made my mouth. So even though he's talking about a short, uh, short sword, when the Apostle Paul was telling us that if we're going to join up the church and we're going to be a, on the battlefield, he told us the first thing you need to do is do what? Put on the whole arm of God. Mm -hmm. And then uh, he also said when you put on this whole arm, we know he's talking about the breastplate, the shield, and all this. But he said, and take the helmet of salvation yeah. and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Okay. Yeah. And God's word mm -hmm. is like a double Edged sword. It cut both ways. Yes, sir. Uh, what do you mean it cut both ways? It, it cut to hurt you, and it also cut to help you. Mm -hmm. I'm mindful of a, a rose. You have a notice on your rose. You have a dying section on that rose. If you don't Go out there to trim that road, and all you cut is just a dead hole. You got to go a little lower than a dead hole and cut some of that green off. Because if you fail to cut the green off, then that dead hole will continue to spray. So every now and then, God has to cut us with that word where it hurts sometimes. It is a double edged sword. But he's talking about here that his mouth is <coughs> like a sharp sword in the shadow of his hand, and he said, and he had hid me, and, and, but he made me a polished shaft, you know, in his quiver had he hid me. In other words, what he's telling us here, that Jesus had been around a long time, but at the fullness of time, God was going to reveal them to him. Even during this time of our lesson, which is 695 B.C., Christ had not come as God's son who was born in a man. But Christ had been around for a long time. Uh, he had been around when they, at, at the, when they left out of Egypt. He was a pillar of a fire by night. He was a, a, a cloud by day. And he even showed up before the angel uh, went to Sodom and Gomorrah. It was Christ showed up with two more angels to come and tell Abraham about they was going to have a baby. Uh -huh. But at this fullness of time is what Isaiah is prophesizing here in verse 2. And Christ is coming down here to take on Satan and, and take on sin. And my brother, my sister, if we're going to be part of what Christ coming to do, that's what it's all about. Mm -hmm. To take on the sin of, of Satan and, and, and sin and the evilness of this word. Uh, so again, Isaiah is prophesizing that this will be a future event that he's speaking of. Uh, in, in verse 3, he said, And said unto me, Thou art my servant. Again, who is the servant here that he's talking about? He's talking about Jesus Christ. O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. When God sent his son down here on this earth, he came as a servant of his father. And the whole time, Jesus was down here, he was 
about his father's business. Mm -hmm. uh, he was a servant. And we find in, in John 17, 1 and 5. Could someone read what John 17, 1 and 5 says about Jesus when he showed up on the scene, what he was about when he showed up? John 17, 1 through 5. These words said Jesus, and he lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, that I always come, glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. And thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know, know the, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou hast given me to do. And now, O oh Father, glorify thou me with thy own self, with the glory which I, which I had with thee before the world was. Amen. So we see now that Jesus came to this earth that he might glorify right. his Father. Yes, yes, and the old scripture that Nathan Preston just read unto us, this is at the getting close to the end of Jesus' time down here on earth. And in that 17, uh, John 17 uh, chapter, verse 1 through 5, he's letting them know that he had glorified his Father oh, yeah. while he was down here. How did he glorify his father? Didn't Christ read that? He said the work is finished. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His work has been finished that he come to do down here. And he was getting ready to go out on the hill of care. Yes, sir. That they might sacrifice him. Mm -hmm. That he might go out and shed his blood for the remission of our sin. Now, what he's talking about here, this is not only for the Jews only. Remember what he's saying. It's been in 49 and 1. He's talking about the hours yeah. of the earth. He's not just coming for the nation of Israel. Mm -hmm. As a servant to do his father's will, he's coming to save everybody. Mm -hmm. And our subject is talking about the Gentiles. The Gentiles are also included in this. Now, at this time, uh, in the life of the nation of Israel, we was left out. But the Gentiles were left out at this time, and the nation of Israel would not even have anything to do with no Gentiles. But look what God is doing, and Isaiah is prophesying way in the future. Uh, and this is uh, 695 years, this is 695 years before Christ is going to show up on the scene. Mm -hmm. And he letting us know that he's going to come and glorify his father. Now let me back up a little bit. The nation of Israel, when God called them to be his people, they, God called them to bring, bring glory unto him. Mm -hmm. uh, and let me share this with you. Now, whether you bring glory unto God, God will get his glory. Yeah. Because he, on three occasions, well, I can get even four occasions, when he used the nation of Israel to get glory for his own sake. Mm -hmm. And they did not understand what, he, what, what, what God was doing down in Egypt. With those ten plagues, God got that glory. Mm -hmm. The rest of the world knew Pharaoh, they knew how powerful he was. And when God came down with those plagues, God got that glory. Yes, sir. At, at the Red Sea. Yeah. Yeah. When the Red Sea opened, God got the glory. The glory. Yeah. And what did that hard Rahab say? I, I know what your God did at the Red Sea. Yeah. And, and the people was complaining. The nation of Israel was complaining. And Moses told them, stop your complaining and get ready to see the salvation of the Lord. Now these ought to be lessons for us. Now, the church is to give God the glory. Mm -hmm. but for some, we have to be careful about the time that we complain when we go through trials and tribulation because if God sees us through those trials and tribulation, that's when we can give God the glory. It's not always I might get something that I'm going to give God some glory. God ought to be getting glory through these trials and tribulations we go at Jericho, mm -hmm. when the walls come tumbling down, oh, yeah. God got some gold. Yes. Yes. And then on another 
case, and this hasn't even happened at this time, when those three Hebrew bugs went into the fire of the furnace. Oh, yes. yes. What Nebuchadnezzar said, I put three in there. Yeah. But it looked like a fourth figure in there, mm. who looked like the Son of God. Oh, God yes. used that occasion to get glory unto himself. Yeah. My brother and my sister, we have to get glory unto God. We have to learn how to stand through trials and tribulation. And this is what uh, uh, Isaiah is, is, is letting, he's speaking to the Gentile nation now. Then when his son was here, he was here to give glory unto God. And the nation of Israel was called to give glory unto God, but they failed terribly. Mm -hmm. But when his son came, God got his glory. Now, the thing, the question that we should be asking, I would say, it is the church giving God the glory. Or uh, we have to be careful because we're living in a time now where look at all people want is to see what they can get out of God. That's right. But when we get ready to leave here uh, uh, and stand before God, we want to hear this way of done my good and faithful work. Yes, sir. Sir. So let's learn how to serve God. Uh, uh, and that's what people know that we are for real about this, and this is when God gets his glory. Mm -hmm. uh, thank God, O Israel, in whom I will be glorified. The nation of Israel came on short. Well, how could you use this? Because Jesus came through the nation of, of Israel. Uh, and again, I know it gets kind of complicated up until he, till we get down to that seventh verse because it appears that he's talking about the nation of Israel, but all this is pointing for Jesus Christ who declared that I am the light of the world. In verse 4, he said, Then I said, I have labored in vain. I have spent my strength for naught and in vain. Yet sure, my judgment is with the law, and my work is with God. What is he saying here? Mm. I have labored in vain. Oh, yeah. Do you know that it appeared when Jesus got ready to leave you that all his labor was in vain? Because Jesus came to save the world. And the same people that he came to the nation of Israel, he was despised and he was rejected by the nation of Israel. And I'd like to say something. Uh, we got some young preachers that's under my leadership here at Green Meadow. Uh, that's some great teaching in, in this four verse. We find the writer said, then I said, have I labored in vain? Have I spent my strength for naught and in vain? I want to start right there at that point. I'm headed toward seven years of pastoring here at the Green Meadow Church. My first five years was a learning process. But after five years, I would like to use this term, I, I crossed over a hill that meant a lot to me. Because my first five years, you wonder, <laughs> it is my labor in vain. You, you wonder when you are leading God's people, is it falling on deaf ears? Yeah. My leadership with God's people, sometimes you're questioning but because of how things look sometimes. Mm -hmm. So we, this is Jesus here, speaking of what's his labor mm -hmm. in vain. And, and we know that Jesus' labor was not in vain, but he was denied. He was rejected. Yeah. Yeah. He was despised. Yeah. So the writer is, is, is painting a picture for us, like I would say, for the young ministers that's coming behind me. You're going to go through the same thing yeah. when the Lord bless you with a, with a church. But, but it's going to take your time. <laughs> like I said, once I got over there, that's not the end of the 
us. That's the other hurdle that I'm going to have to cross. But that's one hurdle you have to get over because you are questioning yourself. Is it my label in, in vain? Uh, is all that I'm doing, but not keep on preaching, keep on teaching, keep on leading those people the way God tells you to lead? Because this is Jesus Christ. And when he came in his arms, guess what they, they, they rejected him. They refused him, but look what he says in that second part. Of, yet surely my judgment is with the law. Well, and see, once you get to that point, once yeah, you get over that barrel, yes, you're not worrying no more about the people. Mm -hmm. Once you realize that I'm doing this, this is because this is what God is leading me, yes. that's when you got the spirit to run. Yes, that's right. And, and that's what he says. Surely my judgment, yes, you do what the Lord tells you to do. Yes. And I'm not just coming to the preacher, I'm coming to the teachers, I'm coming to the head of the auxiliary. People that are working, that's leading for God, sometimes it appears that, that, that what you're doing is in vain. But no, you got to realize who the judge is. Yes, yes. Who sir. judge you and who, who you got to give an account to for your work that you do. And, and, and that's the, the law. And that's what he's saying here. Yeah. And, and the second part of this book, yet sure my judgment is with the law and my works is with my God. And see, now another thing, it ought to make you want to work right. Yeah, yeah. Because you can get in a leadership position, you can get the wrong attitude. But you have to get yourself together. That's right. Like I said, Moses is one of the greatest leaders that the nation of Israel ever had. And when it got so rough, he had a conversation with God. And God said, I'll kill him. I don't know God, what is there going to say it if you kill up the whole nation? And yeah. God didn't need uh, Moses to tell him that. The lesson that come out of that was, but we who are leaders, it is, it, as long as we are put up mm -hmm. with what the people throw at us, then God will bless them. That's yeah. Now, when we can't put up with no more, God might punish them. We're not in there for the punishment. But, but it should give us strength to just run on because remember who the judge is. Mm -hmm. People might get judged because people don't understand. And the reason people don't understand is because God said, my way it is not their way. Yeah. And people just can't understand when you're leading God's people. And this is what was happening when Jesus was dealing with the nation of Israel. But his work was not in vain. Amen. And we find out when he can get ready to leave here, he said his work was complete. And he hung his head and his shoulders before he left here. He said, Father, it's finished. What is finished? A lot of people thought he was finished. No, he wasn't finished, but the no. work that his father sent him to do it. And not only that, we as pastors, preachers, teachers, and don't stop that, the entire body of church is going to have to give an account to God. That's right. About your work. So we find here that Isaiah is drawing a picture about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus had a hard time dealing with the mission that God sent him down here to do. Guess what? Thank God he was saved. That is finished. We find him in this fifth verse that, and now, says the Lord, that formed me from the womb to be his servant, to bring Jacob again, Jacob again to him. Though Israel be not gathered, get you I'll be glorious in the eyes of the Lord, and my God shall be my strength. And he said, It is a light thing that thou shouldest be my servant to raise up the tribe of Jacob and to restore and preserve of Israel. I will also give thee for a light to the Gentiles that thou may be my salvation until the end of the earth. Notice in verse 5, this is Jesus speaking here when he said, And now says the Lord who formed me from the womb to be my servant. And keep this in mind. That's what we are. We are, we are servants of God to bring Jacob again so what do you mean? This is he not necessarily talking about the, the nation of Israel to bring Jacob again because they had strayed away from him. 
Now he's also looking in the future where he knows that they're going to be carried away uh, because of their sin, because of their running after the idols of God. Mm -hmm. But Jesus knew that he had work to do while he was here. Though Israel be not gathered, yet shall I be glorious in the eyes of the Lord. And my God shall be my strength. God is going to be with anyone that he called to lead his people. And that's we have to learn how to lean and depend on the Lord. Mm -hmm. Now this is his song talk. This is his song talk. Jesus would not die here on his own. And he had to confer with his father to give him strength to do God's will. Sometimes as we come up short, we need to pray to God. We need to ask God for leadership. We need to ask God for guidance to do his work and the completed work. And he said, it is the light thing that thou should be my servant to raise up the tribe of Jacob. This is Jesus' mission when he came here. His first order of business was that God sent him to his own. Who is his own? The nation of Israel. He's talking about the tribe of Jacob. That's who God sent him to. But guess what they did? They rejected him. And to restore and preserve of Israel, that's what he came. To bring the nation of Israel back to God. And, and since they did not accept him, they did not stop Jesus. Mm -mm. Jesus had work to do. Yes. Sometimes rejection hurt us so bad that we want to get up the job of God. But no, you cannot stop just because of rejection. Mm -hmm. Look what he said. Also that thou may be my salvation until I left my son. Excuse me. Ah, sure. That I will also give thee for a life to the Gentile. Yeah. He came to his own mm -hmm. and they received him not. Yeah. And once he was rejected by the nation of Israel, what did he do? He turned God's plan of salvation to the Gentile nation. Mm -hmm. That's what he did. Yeah. Because he didn't come just to save the nation of Israel. He came that he might save the okay. whole world. And my, and my brother and my sister, guess what? The world needs saved. And that's why I was suddenly saying he is the light. That's what I was suddenly giving about. A light for the Gentile. Sometimes we get so focused uh, 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 about this the flock that I get. Yeah, we got to be concerned about this flock. But when God called up and saved the entire look at the condition that our world is in right today. They're walking in darkness. But he Jesus declared that I am the light of the world. And then look what he said, that they may be my salvation until the end of the earth. Now he's going, he's including the church in this, but before we finish our lesson today, this lesson extends far beyond the church. It's going to go all the way to the end of the earth. And when he come back and rapture the church up, that will not be the end of the earth. When they go through the uh, tribulation, and the great tribulation, that will not be the end of the earth. When they go through the millennium period for a thousand years, that will not be the end of the earth. But Jesus come to save those that are walking in darkness until God get ready to end this earth down here. Now, notice in those six verses that we just spoke of, it could easily be misunderstood about who is he talking about. But the person that he's talking about here is Jesus Christ being the light of the world. But when you get into this seventh verse, you can clearly see who Isaiah is talking about. Because when you get into this seventh verse, this is what he said. Thus said the Lord, the Redeemer of Israel, 
And we know that Isaiah was not the redeemer of the nation of Israel. And his holy one, first of all, when you talk about the redeemer of Israel, mm -hmm. once you get off track with God, once you stray away from God, it costs something. Oh, yeah. And the plan of salvation that Jesus was bringing, it was a costly mm -hmm. price that had to be paid for the nation of Israel. And to also include the Gentiles into God's plan of salvation. No prophet could do this. Mm -hmm. This was for the redeeming of the nation of Israel. And, and as they said, the nation of Israel was the first priority. And when he talked about the Holy One, the Holy One, he been set apart from anyone else. And he's talking about his son, Jesus Christ. To whom, this is what we get ready to get into, to whom man what despised to him whom the nation have parted. And, and that means they humiliated him, that they, they, they mm -hmm. treated him bad. Yeah. And, and not only that, they even was the one that said crucify him. Yeah. Oh, yes. To a servant, a ruler, king shall seek and arrive. Princes also shall wish him because of, of, of the Lord that is faithful. And the Holy One of Israel, and he shall choose thee. This person that he's talking about is none other than that of uh, Jesus Christ. And we know that he was despised and he was rejected of me. As the scripture said, he was acquainted with grief, a man of sorrow. Jesus went through something. But yet and still, he was going to finish what his father sent him down there to do. Even though he was rejected by the nation of Israel, whom they despised him, they aborted him, they humiliated him, they, they talked about him, they rejected him. Yet he stayed on the battlefield for the Lord. King shall see and rise. Princes also, there were some kings that recognized uh, who Jesus was. Uh, mm -hmm. Herod, mm -hmm. he talked about Jesus. Oh, yeah. Ask the question, is he John the Baptist? Never neither. Uh, mentioned a few minutes ago when he put him in the three people of the fire of Christ. Third, fourth one of that, the son of God. Cyrus, a uh, king that acknowledged that God called him. But when he's talking about kings, his seed, and arrived, prince also shall work because of the Lord that is faithful, because of Jesus' faithfulness, because of Jesus' humility, because of everything that happened to him yet. He continued to do the work that his father sent him to do mm -hmm. because of his humility, because of his humbleness. Whether they rejected him while he knew or not, guess what? Every knee shall bow. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. And every tongue, you're going to confess oh, yeah. to that name of Jesus. What Jesus left in the Bible and the history down here. Maybe he was despised, he was rejected by the here, but people know better now. They knew who he is, they know he was the son of God. And even though all this happened to him, he was able to hang out on Catholic field. Oh. And, and another thing, like I was saying, as leaders, Jesus was treated bad for these scriptures that we studied so far. And even though he was Despised, he was rejected, he was denied of the, his own people. When he hanged out in the own cabbage cross, the word that he used 
I'll open up our understanding. Sometimes when we get denied, mm -hmm. sometimes when we get rejected, sometimes when we get misunderstood. Because when he was hanging out here in the own care, mm -hmm. he looked at the crowd that there was humiliating him, still on care, talking about him. You saved others, come down off the cross mm -hmm. and, and save yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, instead of him getting upset, instead of him getting angry, he stayed the same Jesus that he was. I almost said, my God, he looked up to the hills of which he's come his help, and he said, Father, yeah. forgive them. And the reason I want you to forgive them is because they know not what they are doing. In other words, you got work to do. Condemn you to do your work. Because his work went far beyond just the nation of Israel. Jesus came that he might save the whole world. And that very say, which it does say the Lord, in a acceptable time have I heard you. And in a day of salvation have I helped thee. I will preserve thee and give thee of a covenant of the people to establish the earth, to call to inherit a desolate heritage. What is Jesus saying here? Mm -hmm. In this eight verse, the purpose that he came mm -hmm. is found in the eight verse. Oh, yes. God had told Abraham. Abraham? He made a covenant with Abraham. Mm -hmm. And that Abrahamic covenant is defined in Genesis chapter 12 in verse 3. What the Lord told him, in thee, Abraham, all of the earth mm -hmm. is going to be blessed. Through you, Abraham. And all these years passed. And at this time, when God made Abraham the covenant, that was not even a nation of Israel. The nation of Israel came by, by when Joseph wrestled with the angel all night. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And after he wrestled with the angel all night, and his hip got knocked out of the side, he asked him to bless him. And he told him, Your name will no longer be Jacob. But your name will be Israel. Yeah, right. And to this point, it appeared that the nation of Israel was the only people that had access to God. Mm -hmm. But you have to go back to what the Lord told Abraham. Right. That every family yeah. Yeah. on this earth is going to be blessed through you. And this blessing was going to come through his servant, Jesus Christ. Because until Jesus came with God's plan of salvation, only the nation of Israel could call themselves God's people. But when Jesus came, everything changed. And after he, Jesus left here, and they were establishing the church, and, and Jesus came to establish the church. Before he left here, he told uh, Peter that up on this rock, I'm going to be in my church. Yeah. And it was up on Peter's testimony that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. But the Jews, the same one that God sent him to the first that rejected him, long after he left here, they had become a hindrance 
to the church, and they also became a hindrance to anyone else who wanted to be set to God. Let's go to Galatians 3, 27 through 29. When Jesus came, the fact that the Sadducee, the Sanhedrin court that, that was made up of the Sadducee, Pharisee, the scribe, and, and, and all those that, that rejected him. When Jesus got ready to set up his church, he had to go to get some ordinary men called the Twelve Apostles to set up his church. And, and even the one that he came, the one that was in charge, the one that should have known better, even though they rejected him, he took what God gave him to set up his church. Uh, and he was uneducated and not, not being negative because you need all the education that you can get. Mm -hmm. He chose these 12, but, but even after he left, and then uh, Pastor Paul showed up, the one that we get ready to hear from him. Now, he was a highly educated man. And he was so highly educated, he had the best of education that you could get in that time, and he got it from the men. And with all that education he had when he met Jesus, guess what happened? He had to be re-educated through Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. And, and, and the one that we get ready to talk about now, he, he played a role in, in, in helping the Gentiles and trying to help the Jews to realize that Jesus just didn't come for the Jewish nation only. He came for the Gentiles. He came for the the whole world, and he is the light of the world. And let's find out what Paul said in Galatians 3, 27 through 29. Verse 27. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor G Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ's, then are ye Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. Heirs according to the promise that he gave Abraham. But knowing this dispensation, which is the church dispensation, for you not to accept Jesus Christ for your personal Savior, even though you are an Israelite, even though you are a Jew, if you do not accept Christ, Abraham is not your father. Right there in the scripture. Galatians 3, 27 through 29. Because Jesus came with God's plan of salvation. And that plan of salvation is, 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 is for the whole human race. Yeah. And that covenant that he talked about, he made that covenant with Abraham. He used the Jews to bring glory to him, but they fell short. One reason they fell short, they was always complaining. And they never was appreciative to who God was and what God did for him, for them, as a nation. And they always would be like other nations to the worshiping God, the spirit, and the truth. But God had a plan. Yeah. Yes. Before all the way back to Abraham, this was God's plan, but the nation of Israel never understood the role that they played in God's plan. And I wonder today, does the church know what our role is? Our role is, is to bring the whole world. Our role is to bring glory unto God. Even through trials and tribulations, we are still to bring glory unto God. Amen. Like I said, that song we sing, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. And I will serve him until, until I, I, I die. Mm -hmm. uh, are we willing to stay on the battlefield or we let trials? And tribulation comes into our lives. And in that verse, in that verse that we just read, that a verse, I will preserve thee and give thee for a covenant to other people to establish 
the earth to cause to inherit this desolate paradise that he God gave the covenant to Abraham. Yes, at that time. It appeared that it was just for the Jewish nation. But remember what he told Abraham, that every family on the face of the earth is going to be blessed through you. My brothers and my sisters, it's time for us to be concerned about the entire world because our subject is telling us about he was a light to the Gentiles. And he's still a light to this entire world, even in a time where the world is walking in darkness. Yeah. The people need Jesus Christ now mm -hmm. more than they ever needed him. In verse 9, in verse 10, he says, That thou may say to the prisoners, Go forth to them that are in darkness. Show, Show you. yourself. They shall be in the way, and their pastors shall be in the high places. They shall not harm, nor thirst. Neither shall the heat, nor the sun smite them. But he that hath mercy on them shall lead them. Even by the springs of water shall he guide them. In that verse 9, when he talked about the prisoners, mm -hmm. go forth to them that are in God. What prisoners that he's talking about here? Anytime you're in sin, you're a prisoner of sin. Mm -hmm. But Isaiah is looking at the nation of Israel on how they're disobedient to God. It's going to ca cause them to be taken out of the holy land, the land that's flowing with milk and honey, uh, the land where they had houses that they did not build, that's built right. on, that they did not plant. They were going to be removed, and, and they were going to be taken prisoners down in Babylon, Syria. And we know that they were going to stay in Babylon for 70 years. Mm -hmm. But what the writer is saying here, once they are going to be released from prison, that they are to go forth for them that are in God. Mm -hmm. God was not going to let the nation of Israel stay prisoner because they had a job to do. Right. And when God chose you and when God called you to do a job for him, whether you volunteer or not, God's going to get the job done. Mm -hmm. So when they were to come back from being prisoners down into Babylon, he's telling them to come on back and let your light show shine and make yeah. yeah. Show yourself. Yeah. Let the world, and how are they going to glorify God? For God to bring them back from where they had been held prison and to restore them and build back up the nation of Israel. Yeah, yeah. The whole world will see what God was doing to that nation. Exactly. Come on back and show yourself. My brother and sister, be about God's business. Every now and then the devil might knock us down. Get on back up. Yeah. Well, what do you tell your children when a young boy is coming up trying to ride by? To Get back when you get on that bicycle, you got training wheels on. When you take those training wheels off and he falls in your chest, get on back up and get on that bicycle and learn how to God is telling us, don't sit around with your head. Get on back up. Because God is using them to be a light of the world. They shall be in the way, and that pastor shall be in all our places. 
God is letting know that I'm going to deliver them. After the 70 years, I'm going to bring them back mm -hmm. and I'm going to place them in the place that I picked and I chose for them. And after that 70 year period, they would never be taken out of that land again. And guess what? Right today. That's giving glory, giving glory to God. And that's showing the power that God had. And what Isaiah is doing is he's looking at, this is 695 B.C. And we know that this is somewhat 11 years or so before they even being taken captive down in Babylon. And, and, and Isaiah is showing when they're going to get out. And, and when they're going to get out, to come on back and then show yourself. Come on back and build what was destroyed because of your wrongdoing. Come on back and be about God's business. Oh, yeah. Maybe wonder about when this thing is over with. When we come back, I hope we can come back better and stronger being about God's business. He said they shall feed in the way and that pastor shall be in our place. My brother and my sister, God will take care uh, of his children. Because when we go back to that scripture that Sister Porter read about Jesus, accepting him for Abraham to be your father. Now, until they accepted Jesus to make Abraham their father, Jesus is telling him in that same scripture that she read, and, and, and you can go back and read it for yourself. Do you not know that God was no longer that father? And he was telling me that even Abraham is not your father. The only way Abraham will be your father, at this point, you're going to have to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. God is your God. But until you accept Jesus as your personal Savior, that's the only way you can get adopted into the royal family. And then once you get into the royal family, you don't have to worry about it. Okay. God will take care of you. Yeah, yes, sir. What he's saying is that God will feed you, mm -hmm. God will close you, yeah. God will keep you in high place. God will take care of you when you accept him as being your heavenly father, and the only way you can do that is you got to accept his son, Jesus Christ. That's right. And this is the point that he was trying to get over to the Jewish nation at this time. Mm -hmm. You're talking about Abraham, your father. Those days are gone, my brother and my sister. You do not accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior because he said, he talked about the redeemed. Yeah. The redeemed of his race. What do you mean to redeem or be ready? If you want to be redeemed, you have to bought and you have to pay for it. Yeah. And the yes. price that bought you yeah. and paid you was yes. not of no silver. Mm-mm. No. no of, it, of any gold. No, no. You were bought and paid for the precious blood. Jesus Christ, yes. The Lord and Savior, Jesus yeah. Christ. And oh, what a price that was for you. You heard that old song that we sang when the old 100? That they don't want to sing no more about that fountain. There is a fountain yes, sir. filled with blood. With blood. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't no four lane blood, it was drawn from a manual yes, sir. And that's what he came for. Yeah. That's what he came with that sharp sword, the word of God was. It was made in sin can plunge beneath that throat yeah. and watch all I was seeing the way. That's what he came. That's what he came. He was a sharp sword. He was a barrel. He was a polished shaft. Mm -hmm. When God sent him, he knew what he was sending him for. Oh, yeah. And he sent him to defeat Satan because when he got up on resurrection morning, he declared all power mm -hmm. in heaven and earth. Was in his hand. Mm. We dealt with that ninth verse. Mm -hmm. Ten. When he was dealing with them, in that ninth verse, he was talking about the nation of Israel. 
when they were going to come back from being prisoners down in the land of Babylon. Come on back and be about your father's business. But we find the writer looking well beyond the nation of Israel coming out of Babylon. We even look farther than the church who Jesus came and he died for the church. He paid a price for the church. And he declared to the church, I am a shepherd. We know that he was a king and a shepherd. But I'm not just any shepherd. And I'm not no how. Because he said that a how, that if the wolf come on, he said a how is the wrong. And my brothers and my sisters, not only that, what he mean a how is if you're in this business for the money, and things don't right and Satan can put you on the wrong. But, but he said that I am a good shepherd. I'm not in this for no money. And, and I will lay down my life oh, for my sheep. Oh, yeah. And he just wasn't tough and he proved it because he laid his life down. Late one Friday, but thank God he got up mm -hmm. on early Sunday morning. Yes, sir. And, and that's why we don't have to worry about nothing because he declared that I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And I have all power in heaven and earth is in my hand. And while I was down here, whatever people needed, I, I could meet their needs. And if you find yourself out on a boat, and then it's past the fourth hour, but they were looking for Jesus to come in, and after the fourth hour, it appeared that there was no hope. And they were trying to roll themselves back to shore. And the more they rolled, the farther they got away from the shore. And it was one, I think it was the four hours or something. But they had given up. And we just can't go to the water, so here comes Jesus. Walking on the water. I don't care what type of situation you get yourself in. Whatever it takes Jesus to get there, he would come walking on the water. And one more thing I wanted to talk about before I go to this very team. When Jesus came, he proved that he wasn't just about the Jews. Because they tell me he was a boy. And he was on the other side. And Jesus got on a boat. And he traveled over to the other side. And when he got to the other side, they said that there was a boy over there that he had been crying out day and night. Oh, yeah. Said he would use the stone to, to cut his sin. And, and it said that, look, they had put feathers on him. They had put chains on him. But the feathers and chains could not hold him. And all he could do was just cry out. I don't know what put him in the condition that he was in, but the boat was so bad, <laughs> nobody had anything to do with him. But, but guess what? Jesus showed up on the scene. And when Jesus showed up on the scene, we know how he cast those demons out of that boy. Now keep in mind, he had left Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and crossed over on the other side. We talked about the earlier those hours, the water that separated. He got in the boat and went on the other side. So this boy fell into the town of a Gentile. And once he healed the boy, the boy asked Jesus, I want to go with you. And what did Jesus tell him? No, you can't go with me. Go back home and show yourself. And I imagine when the boy got back home, and the people asked him, we know you. We can see the scar on you. We can see where you took your body with the feathers in the tent. What happened to you? I met a man named Jesus. Oh, yeah. You see, Jesus lost what happened, not only the Jew, but he was helping someone else while he was here. Oh, yeah. So let's go to this verse 10 and get ready to I'll close this thing down, brother. Now. Where is he in verse 10? What, what dispensation is this? Because Isaiah could look to the future. He looked at his time. He looked at the dispensation at Jesus' coming. He looked at the church. And he's looking far beyond the church in verse 10. Where he said, They shall not hunger, nor thirst, neither shall the heat nor the sun smite them. For he that hath mercy on them, shall lead them, even by the streams of water, shall he guide them. These Jesus is looking 
beyond the tribulation and the great tribulation. So let's find out what he's talking about here. Someone found me Revelation 7, 13 through 17, and notice the words that's going to be spoken in Revelation 7, 13 through 17, and this is after the tribulation and the great tribulation. He said that I will be with you to the end of the earth. Jesus does not tell those things that he cannot do. Revelation 7, 13 through 17. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thy knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of the great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore are they before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger Wait, no stop more. Stop right there. Can you see this in, the, in this tenth verse? Listen to what you get ready to read. And look at the number verse 10. Go ahead, sister Paul. They shall hunger no more. Uh -huh. Neither shall neither thirst any more. Will, will. Neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. For the Lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them, and shall lead them unto living fountains of water. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Lord have mercy. Amen. This is the power of God's Son. <laughs> Amen. Who declared that I am. Oh, yes. The light of the world. Yes. He yes. sent it to his home and received it. Now he sent it to the church. Mm -hmm. And even after the church has been wrapped up out of here. Oh, yes. Those, uh, don't let anyone fool you when they talk about they want to be in that number. They come up on the rough side of the mountain. You don't want to be in that number. Because the number that's going to come up on the rough side of the mountain, they are the one that's going to make it through the tribulation and the great tribulation. And the church will not have to go through that. But even through that, Jesus ain't going to be with them. He said they won't have to hunger no more. They won't have to thirst no more. They won't have to worry about those heat no more. Because he said the lamb shall lead them. He shall feed them. And not only that, he said they shall wipe away their tears. Oh, yes. But it's one more thing he said in there now. He said that when they get there, they're going to serve him day and night. Day and Did night. you read that in the scripture? Yeah. Yeah. Now, when I read that, that they're going to serve him day and night. Now, long when I'm from my age. Oh, if you're going to serve him day and, and night, night in the temple, when you get up there, how is it that you can't serve him for two hours? Oh, Lord. Yes, sir. While you're down here. Amen. My brother and I said, we got to get it together. Mm. Because this lesson, it was, some, it was a prize paid for this. Yeah. Even though they didn't treat him right, they didn't do it right, but he still wanted to fulfill God's prophecy for mankind. It wasn't only for the nation of Israel. It's not only for the church, but it's for every nation under the sun. Oh, yes. Thank God's you. concern about every nation. Lord. The son of the song. He sent his song. And his song declared that I am not the light of the United States of America. Not the light of Israel. I am the light of the whole world. Mm -hmm. and, and, and for you and I, my brothers and sisters, for we that are part of the church. Now at one time, do you know that we were excluded from this? And if you don't think we wasn't less true, you need to go to the book of Ephesians. Verse 2, 11, and 13. Well, the Apostle Paul, once he was educated right by Jesus, once he got it right, because at one time, he was just like these Jews that denied Jesus. Remember, he said, I want to stand by this new religion that is the church. But once he got it together, and he did get it together. He needed more education that he got from the men. He needed to be educated by Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. And then when Jesus left me, he needed the third member of the Trinity. Because I heard him say, every time I desire to do right, evil oh, yeah. is always present. Yes, but I like to finish with his word that's found in the book of Ephesians. Chapter 2, verse 11. He said, he's telling us 
to, to, to we who the, uh, the church, we who not of the Jewish nation, we are, who are not of the Israelites. He said, remember. Sometimes we forget things. Sometimes we forget what God brought us from. He said, remember that we being past time Gentiles yes. and called uncircumcised. That at that time we were without Christ being alien from the commonwealth of Israel. We were separated from that promise that he had given the nation of Israel. And he said we were strangers from the covenant of the promise. We were strangers yeah. from that covenant of the promise that he made with Abraham at one time. We were strangers. And Paul said we didn't have any what? No hope. And you were in the world without God in the world. Lord have mercy. But now, but oh, now. Oh, yes, sir. But now, Christ. But now in 2020, in Christ Jesus, we who were for all. Mm. <laughs> we are now made, he said. Now we are made near. How? By the blood yes. of Jesus Christ. Oh, yes, yes. There was a wall. That separated us. If you was not a Jew, that was a wall yes, that divided yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. From God, separated us from God. Mm -hmm. But when Jesus came and died, that wall was broken down. Right. Yes, sir. And this last word, my brother and sister, I shouldn't have to say nothing about it. This verse 22. Mm -hmm. God Thus says the Lord the God. Behold, I will lift up my hand to the Gentile. We are considered the Gentile. Yes, sir. He said, I will lift up my hand to the Gentile, and I will set up my standards to the people. God has some standards that we have to live. We just can't live in that type of way we want. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When Jesus said he came, and he was in a battle because sin was what was ruling over people. Sin, people were living in sin. Do you know why some people don't want to come to church? Let me say this very quickly. Uh, I remember on one occasion when I got saved, I still wanted to hang out with my brothers. And I remember on one occasion when I went home to East Texas, and we were all standing out in the yard. And one of the friends came by, and I was still wanting to hang out with the boy. I got in the car with him, and it was late in the evening, and they ended up at a Jew joint. And I ended up down at the Jew joint. When I got in the Jew joint, it was smoke everywhere. It was, it was drinking everywhere. It was cursing everywhere. Some of those friends that didn't have to say anybody want to run and put your hand around your neck. And there ain't nothing more than no man hanging around my neck. <laughs> but that's what that alcohol makes me do too. We ran four backs, quarterback, two halfbacks, and a fullback. And, and they, two of them gone. But, but, but the other halfback came up that night and, and told me these words. He said, I've been hearing a lot of things about you. And he said, I, I see that you've been changed. Mm -hmm. And he said, if God changed you, he can change anybody. Those was his words to me. Yeah, yeah. What are you trying to go with that? People can see when God changed you. Yes. People can see when God turned us around. Even though they can see it, but they still would not accept God on their own. And he told me I've got to change my life. But he ended up dying. And I don't know whether he got to change his life or not. Mm, I don't know. But what I'm saying, it's standards that we have to live by. Oh, yeah. And, and when I was in the Jew that night, what was going on there, I didn't want to be part of that no more. Mm. In other words, it made me sick. I couldn't wait to get out of there. And finally, somebody said, I'm going back to town. I said, man, can you drop me out by my mama's house? Uh, I just wanted to get out of that environment. Mm. But that's what he said. We got new standards that we have to live by. And look at that. Now this is what God said. And they shall bring thy sons in their own. In their own. And thy daughters shall be carried upon their shoulders. What did he say? Once you 
been saved. Yes, sir. Once you have given your life to God. Mm -hmm. He said, what you need to do, if you've been saved, you ought to be concerned about saving your son. You ought to be concerned about saving your daughter. And look what's happening to our churches. They are thinking of our children. And I come from a generation that it was mandatory. If you want to stay under the roof, you had to go to church. Oh, yeah. yes. And then when my generation come, right here at this church, right here, we had a strong, wealthy, powerful group of children. But something has happened. Oh, yeah. People don't bring their children no more because they let their children get. But the Lord is telling us, Isaiah prophesied this 695 years ago. He said, once you've been saved, help save your children. That's what that last version said. Bring them in your arms, your sons and your daughters. Bring them. Teach them about God. That you can say, help save your children. And my brother and my sister, it's a terrible thing to be living under the condition that we're living under right here on May the 12th, 2020, and somebody in your family is not saved. You don't have to be sick to get this back. All those years ago, and he's closing this lesson up by telling us how God sent a light yeah. 695 years before the coming of Jesus Christ before the church. And here it is 2,020 years later. When he declared that he sent his son, that he is the light of the world. He sent him like a sword, sword. He came. He came to take on sin. He came to take on the devil. And when we go to that last verse that she read, Jesus had defeated the Antichrist and threw him in the pit. And we're getting ready to reign for a thousand years. Yeah, and the nation of Israel, they did not get it right, but he was not finished with the nation of Israel. They will come to God during that period. But even after the church had been wrapped it up, then he's going to deal with the nation of Israel. It's a lot to these students. And we find that Isaiah was prophesied this in the 49th chapter of Isaiah. Things had got so bad when he got into the ninth chapter around the sixth verse, he said unto you, a son is born, a child is given, and it shall ninth chapter is wonderful, counselor. God going to send somebody here for us. And then when he got to the 53rd chapter, he asked a question. After he did all this talking in the 49th chapter, when he got to the 53rd chapter, he asked the question, who will believe, believe? our report? My brother and sister, do we believe this? It's all for real. And God sent his son into this world. He was, he is, the light of the world. And he said that as long as he was in this world, he is the light of the world. And he said, when I leave out of here, my church that I'm going to set up, a city that sits up on a hill that cannot be hid. You are the light of the world. My brother, my sister, it's time for us to let out the light so shine. Yes, sir. That this world that's walking in darkness, to let God use us as servants to do his work. And when the world look and see the work that we are doing for the Lord, that they might come around and say, Lord, what must I do? Yeah. And if I be saved, that I might be saved. Because if we are saved, we accept God's son, and even under these conditions, 30 million people have lost their jobs. We got people in high positions that lying, won't tell the truth. Nobody know what to believe anymore. But one thing you can't believe, you can believe that God sent his son 
who declared that I am the light of the world, who declared that I will never leave you, I will never forsake you. Yes, sir. And, and whatever you stand in need of, my heavenly Father will know what you need before you need to even go to your name. I hope we can give our life to Jesus Christ. The only way you can get to the Father is through the Son. Christ loves us. Christ loves this whole world. He wanted better for the world than it is right now. But if you accept His Son as your personal Savior, God can take care of you. We can make it through this thing. I thank God for tonight. I thank God for our listeners. I hope someone was helped on this lesson on tonight. Like I said, when you get in the book of Isaiah, you find yourself being like that young. Who is he talking about? He's talking about his Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Let us bow our heads in a moment. Turn to God our Father, the Father of our Lord and our Savior. Father, we come tonight Thank you for one more opportunity to study me your holy word. Father, it appears to me as one kid called to carry on the role as a shepherd, striving to lead your people, teaching them about a mediator by the name of Jesus Christ, who stands before God and people of this world. Because Father, we living in a time that we never seen before. We praying all of uh, the entire world. We praying for those that in opposition. Oh, yes. That you would touch them in a mighty way. And then uh, for the people uh, of this world that's in a dilemma like they never seen before. Oh, 30 million, 33 million, I believe, in the report. Two months ago, Lord, they had a job supporting their family. Father, some of these young people have never experienced anything like this before. Some of them don't know which way to turn. But Lord, I pray that you would just have mercy and we know that you're not coming down from heaven to do anything. But your church is down here. And Jesus declared, we're the light of the world. Yes, Lord. We don't know what to do, Lord. But if you show us, guide our feet, use our tongue, that wasn't time like this. And we can use this opportunity as an opportunity to bring the world in God something that marvelous life. And for all this, listeners on tonight, Lord, I pray you to you. Bless them, continue to use them. And give us all a mind to tell the world about your son Jesus Christ, who is able to meet all our needs according to his riches in heaven. Cattle of a thousand years, they all belong to him. And he's able to take care of us all. And we just thank him tonight. Continue to watch your love. Continue to protect you. Not about us, no. We just pray that you will use us to do your will in the time of your And after everything I've been saying in now, I will praise our Lord. That I will love you to follow. The Son, the Holy Spirit. Listen, name of Jesus, this is our prayer. Amen. Amen.